activists and families come together to announce a lawsuit against the sheriff's department over inmate deaths. An antique vehicle owned by a family for more than 50 years is stolen right in front of their home. Plus, are you getting shortchanged when it comes to coffee sizes at Starbucks? The Verify team investigates a viral TikTok claim. And as temperatures climb this summer, a first-hand look at just how quickly leaving your child or your pet inside your car can turn dangerous. And the San Diego sunflower so tall, we had to call in a drone for a bird's eye view. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. No more deaths. That's the word from activists and family members today to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Today, the Racial Justice Coalition of San Diego and the North County Equity and Justice Coalition announced they're joining a class action lawsuit against the department. And as CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes found out, they're putting their anger into action. Family members and activists came together to announce that they are joining that lawsuit against the sheriff's department over inmate deaths. And emotions ran high as their family members recounted their loved ones' final days on earth. I'm mad. We want answers. I'm not the only family up here either. Sabrina Weddle is Saxon Rodriguez's big sister. He died July 20th in San Diego County Jail off of fentanyl. Saxon died in custody in San Diego County Jail last year, one day before his court date. Tomorrow he'll be 23 and I have to sit in my house, outside, wherever I am, and have to remember that my brother died in a jail cell. And most of these people died before they even had their day in court. So they were not guilty yet and they've lost their lives in custody. In February, a state audit found between 2006 and 2020, there were 185 in custody deaths for San Diego County jails. The state's review says there are deficiencies with the sheriff's department policies. Yusuf Miller with the North County Equity and Justice Coalition says there were 18 custody deaths in San Diego County jails last year. This year, Miller says there are already 10 in custody deaths. We have people dying from overdose. We have people dying from neglect. We have people dying from medical conditions. We have people dying from so many avoidable issues. Meanwhile, these families are left mourning, like Tammy Wilson, Omar Moreno Arroyo's wife. He was a beautiful person. He was only 33 years old. I was always taught that you call the police for help. So I called 911, and instead of an ambulance coming, three deputies showed up to my door. And then less than 12 hours later, he was dead. Indiana. Elisa Cerna's sister. The seven days that she was in custody, she was begging for medical attention. Um, she was passing out, having seizures, vomiting. And Sabrina. I'm not going to give up at all. I want them to know that these people are humans, that they didn't deserve to die in a jail. We reached out to the San Diego County Sheriff's Department for comment on this story. They emailed us back saying they do not comment on pending lawsuits. Kirsten Holmes, CBS 8. In a five to four decision, the Supreme Court said today the Biden administration has the green light to roll back the controversial remain in Mexico policy. Former President Donald Trump put the controversial law into place in 2019, which sent people seeking asylum to Mexico as their cases played out. President Biden suspended the policy on his first day in office, but lower courts ordered it to go back into effect after lawsuits from Texas and Missouri. Now with the blessing of the court, some advocacy groups are pushing the Biden administration to make the move. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan is live at Balboa Park, where a group is calling for just that. Jesse. Yeah, Carla, Marcella, the group gathered here have been talking for just about an hour at this point from all facets of this situation, even from the legal aspects of how this is all played out in the courts. If you look behind me, they are still doing just that and also some flowers here to also commemorate the thousands of migrants they say have been impacted by this law and essentially also send a very direct message that the ball is now in President Joe Biden's court. The group here is made up of San Diego advocacy groups in support of migrants like the American Friends Service Committee. They say the Remain in Mexico policy, which is also known as the Migrant Protection Protocols, hurts more than 70,000 people. The advocates say the law sent back non-Mexican people to Mexico where they have fell victim to abuse and some even to murder. Their message is directed at President Joe Biden himself. The message is directly to the Biden administration that his administration needs to take the correct steps to ensure that 
this um, is rescinded expeditiously and that we understand the steps going forward for how to ensure that people are able to enter the U.S. if they are uh, seeking asylum and done so in a humane way. Now, despite today's ruling, this isn't necessarily a done deal. While the SCOTUS ruling did say that lower courts cannot necessarily stop the Biden administration from ending the policy, there is sure to be another round of litigation which could hold up the ending of this policy until all those are wrapped up in an unknown amount of time. Carlo, Marcella. Thanks, Jesse. Tonight, a woman's been given 25 years to life for killing four people in a DUI crash in Escondido two years ago. 28 year old Ashley Renee Williams was sentenced this afternoon in May of 2020. Williams hit and killed Carmela Camacho, her boyfriend, Abel Juan Valdez and her two grandsons on San Pasqual Valley Road. She was high at the time. We heard from Norma Espinoza today in court. She lost her sons, mother and stepfather. Nobody knows how many times I cry myself to sleep. thinking this is just a nightmare, <laughs> wishing I could just wake up and see them in our home again. Williams was sentenced for three counts of second degree murder and one count of gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated. Tonight, the San Diego Fire Bomb Squad is warning the public to be vigilant this 4th of July. They say you should never play with fireworks, not even sparklers. They say sparklers can cause thousands of injuries each year, about half of those in children. As an alternative to traditional fireworks, Imperial Beach is putting on San Diego's first ever drone fireworks show. Mm. For a full schedule of July 4th events, you can go to our website, cbs8.com. A Mission Valley man is looking for his truck that was stolen last week from a parking lot right in front of his condo. His family has owned the antique Chevy pickup for five decades. As CBS 8's David Godfordson reports, the truck is so unique it would be easy to spot. This is the 1950 Chevy pickup truck on a dyno tune machine. It clocked in at 466 horsepower right after Joel Bamba put in a new engine. The truck has been in my family for 50 years. Joel says the truck has 1 million miles on it. It was owned by his brother for 20 years until he passed away, and now Joel has maintained it for the past 30 years. It's a fun thing to drive. People are always happy to see it. It's, uh, it's you know, it's just my daily driver. It's had a lot. So people ask me about it. On Tuesday of last week, the truck was stolen from the parking lot in front of Joel's condo off Mission Center Road, just north of Mission Valley. It did have a steering wheel lock on it. The kind that you put, put on the steering wheel. I always turn it upside down because it's really hard to pick a lock upside down. Joel thinks the truck must have been towed away because it has an automatic transmission. It was backed into a spot uh, next to a curb. So to get it out of this spot, I think they had to use one of these hydraulic lifts in the back. I don't know if it's a jack with wheels on it or something like that. He filed a police report, but it's been more than a week now, and he's hoping someone will see the truck and recognize it as stolen. It's a three-quarter ton pickup with a long bed, two-tone light and dark brown with a very distinctive chrome grille. To Joel, the truck is priceless. How can you put a value on something like this? This is like uh, losing a long-term pet or, or even a, you know, a relative. That 1950 Chevy pickup is hard to miss. If you see it or you have any information, call San Diego Police. Working for you, David Godfordson, CBS 8. It should be easy to spot. And it's worth a lot of money. It Those is. cars, you see them listed from 20000 up to 60 something so it just depends on... Uh, the value of buyer places on it, but just not cool. And a lot of memories, too, for that yeah. family. If you see it, mm -hmm. help them out there. All right, this was big. Stunning developments coming from the world of college sports today right here in Southern California.
USC and UCLA are leaving the Pac-12 after almost 100 years of West Coast Conference affiliation. Marcus Greaves is here now to fill us in on the details and what it could mean for San Diego State. Marcus. Yeah, this was big and news came as a surprise to many today that UCLA, UCLA excuse me, and USC, two of the Pac-12 Conference's flagship programs, are planning to leave the conference and jump ship over to the Big Ten Conference in 2024. The Big Ten has accepted both USC and UCLA's application to join the conference, so it's set in stone and it's official but let's take a look at this conference map and how crazy this is so we got USC and UCLA all the way over here I'm off the screen and the closest is Nebraska I did a little bit of research that's 1500 miles and of course the only close game that they will play is a rivalry game between them so this is huge and USC and UCLA's exit ends decades of partnerships with the schools from the Pac-12 UCLA joined USC in the Pacific Coast Conference in 1928 that's how far back these roots go so what does this mean for San Diego State though they seem to be an obvious choice to take one of those two spots and if you're an Aztec fan this is something you've been eyeing for quite some time here's San Diego State Athletic Director John David Wicker we're always out there looking to figure out what, what's going to be best. Um, obviously, this opens up a hole in Southern California, and you know, San Diego State is you know, kind of the, the, the one institution sitting here in Southern California, and we'll continue working to put our, you know, our student athletes, our institution, our fans, our alumni in the best possible situation they can be. All right, talking television money now. Mountain West schools get around $4 million per year. Pac-12 in 2020, close to $33 million. The Big Ten's new TV deal is expected to net schools over $70 million a year. And that was before the addition of USC and UCLA. So that is all you need to know. That's pretty crazy. <laughs>